This is the Bruh, one I don't know. and <laughs> cast from season three. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Totem Pole Season 3 Reunion. Unfortunately, tonight we do not have Asher or Jace, but we do have everyone else, and we have plenty to cover. My camera busted up. <laughs> it has been a wild ride of a season. Let's go ahead and get in. But first things first, since we last filmed and all were together, we've had two engagements. Ooh, it was me. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Congratulations yeah. to Sabrina and Maddie on your recent engagements. Congrats. Thank you, my flowers. The moment. You. Come on, I'm flower next. shower. Sorry. <laughs> Up first tonight, we have some history to talk about. For the first time ever in Totem Pole history, the Defender chose power on the first trip to the Defender room. Derek. <laughs> made Total Pole history by taking power and sending home Nicole. Derek, what was it like? What was going on in your head when you went into the Defender room to make that decision? I, I obviously, you know, got down there, saw that it was, you know, green and red. I contemplated, which I saw was true. I contemplated down there. Ultimately, it came down to the power. Got the power, came back upstairs with it. Nicole was out. So I have a question for you. So with season three, there was the baggage twist where every save card had baggage. Had that twist not been there, would you still have taken power? I, wait, like if I if the chances of me not getting the power weren't there? So whenever you went to the Defender Room, you know that every uh -huh. save card has baggage. If that twist was not a part of season three, would that have changed your mind at all? I don't know, it's hard. It's just the temptation of being able to get a power when you're down there, so. So it was more so that. about taking the power rather than avoiding baggage. Mm -hmm. Very much. And Nicole, yes. you said many times when you two had a nice conversation for everyone to see in the, in the middle of the living room, well, that he had that told- was a nice conversation. That he had told you that he, would go, he was going to save you 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 said repeatedly that he said that he would save you and then he said repeatedly that he never said that or that he didn't remember yeah so um well i mean i just wish he had never said that because i wouldn't have picked him i probably would have picked connor um if he hadn't but i mean he proactively came to me um and then when kadia asked me who i would pick as my defender he said in front of kadia that he would keep me safe again so um I mean, how did I feel? I mean, it's a 50-50 shot either way. I mean, I knew when he came up the stairs and he wouldn't make eye contact with me. <laughs> and then he ran to get a drink of water. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it sucked. I mean, I think I had a little bit of an advantage over a lot of people because I did have like three hours alone. Um, so I could kind of deal with everything privately and kind of uh, like mentally check out and move on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sucked. I, I had came on hoping to kind of encourage older people to play. Um, I don't think I accomplished that. So that kind of sucked. But um, like, I've been in enough games where I know, like, if I'm on the bottom early, it never works out for, well for me. So, um, and I think, I mean, Connor and Josh and a few of you have played orgs. And I think that's kind of how it is. When you start out struggling, um, it usually is hard to kind of recoup and, and get in a good position. So once I was already in the bottom, um, I knew it was going to be a struggle. So, eh, I mean, it went really quickly. I didn't have a lot of time to process it till afterwards. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wish he hadn't said that. But, like, I mean, I'll blame Lee Lewis. <laughs> oh, um, I'll I still stand me. by. <laughs> I ain't doing that. No, ma'am. <laughs> Shout out to Lee Lewis. No, yeah, Lee Lewis yeah. is like I love him to death, and that's why I trusted Derek because we were we talked half our conversation was talking about how much we loved Lee, and I was like, 
Oh, if, exactly. if, like, if he, I almost said a bad word. Um, if he's down with me, like, he's cool, I'll trust him, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, love you, Lee. <laughs> I, I love you, I, Lee. <laughs> I still stand by what I said. Um, I never told Nicole that I would save her on the balcony. That is 100%. What I'm saying, sticking by it, Nicole chose to save me. Nicole chose to pick me because we had a mutual friend. But I was playing a game, you know. Lee wasn't there. I was playing a game, man. She picked me. I never only once on the balcony told her that I would save her. And the conversation could be a different story. I told her she could pick me, but I never told her that I would save her on the balcony. Never, not once. What the conversation was, was we need to work together because we're older. If you ever in a we position... Know Lee. If you're ever in a position where you need someone to keep you safe, I'll have you. I'll keep you safe. That was the conversation. So did he say, pick me as your defender? No. So, like, I mean, if anybody thinks that's what I'm saying, absolutely not. Here's the thing. Like, it happened eight months ago. I'm over it. It is what it is. Um, did it suck at the time? Absolutely. Um, would I still recommend people apply? Apply. Like, it, 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 there's still an experience to be had whether your game's 45 yeah. minutes or two days like so I mean I don't know I don't know if that answers your question but I love how the floor was opened and y'all just sitting there well I, I, tried to, <laughs> wait. I was waiting for you to finish talking because mm -hmm. I was gonna say something I felt like you needed this moment to like get off your chest what you felt so I was gonna respond afterwards but like me being in the room when Derek took the card one, I didn't expect it. Um, and it's been, just because, like, you know, I, I, I didn't remember that conversation at first. But it, it, it would have made sense for him to pick save. But at the end of the day, like, it makes sense for him choosing power. It's the first – you're the first one to go down there. He had no, like, actual bonds or ties to you. Now, from a human and, like, Josh standpoint, I actually kind of wanted you to stay because I wanted to, you know, work with you, you know. But it didn't work out like that in the end. And, you know, there's always second chances, I guess. And Queen Nicole will be the <sighs> face of the season. <laughs> Love you, Nicole. You got Mayhem Manor coming up. That's going to be your game. Period. Oh, that's going to be my have some boxed wine weekend. <laughs> that is true. That is true. There's always second chances, Nicole. I will tell you, yes. Because, you know, even though they get ruined by certain people, they're always second, oh. second chances. <laughs> Um, can we flash back, though, to the moment of the Nicole and Derek um, talking through the decision after the power was revealed? I have never seen my jaw drop faster to the floor. I was, I was floored. No, Luke, that was me yelling at Nicole. I was yelling, a man yelling at Nicole. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, oh, girl. wait a minute wait Derek, what are you sense. trying to say Derek, what are you trying to say hey, i'm not a girl but like we were you know, not well, yelling like we i really don't well, understand no, why people that well, was no. like what josh Nicole, i realized that you weren't a girl i realized you aren't a girl i was just quoting what was said in the confessional that's all oh, oh, i don't wait. know what you're talking oh. about I, I <laughs> that's what i was this. asking because yeah. he was like it wasn't us, like, I thought you were saying, like, you were the only one having the conversation. That's what I got from that comment. Yeah, that, I was like, uh, oh. oh, no. I ain't really getting nothing from the comment, but I like being a devil's advocate. So, period, she's a woman. <laughs> God is a woman. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, okay. God's a flying spaghetti monster. Um, so, what I'm saying is, I don't understand. I still don't grasp why that's a thing. Like, I don't feel like that it was aggressive. I don't feel like Derek and I we're being aggressive towards each other. I feel like we disagreed. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I know the like... disagreement makes people uncomfortable, but like I feel like we were just both saying our sides and like speaking. I don't I don't know. Maybe it became felt like uncomfortable. I don't know. This probably feels uncomfortable. Well, I mean, we could else, uh, we so could know. we could just ask we could just ask Tessa. She the one she's the one that made the statement and said that, you know, it was yelling a man yelling at a woman and you know, very what she said, so if she wants yep. to come on off the mute and say wait, anything, so. wait, I said what? Oh. I don't know. I'm going to lie like Derek did. Wait, wait, I got it. That wait, did not no. come out wait. my mouth. Wait. I'm going to lie wait, wait, like wait. he did. <laughs> when you, you seen play. it, you seen you, it. You can't use, you can't use uh, like, 
jokes as a way to get over things all the time, Tessa. Sometimes you have to face I'm those so things. Funny, but that's just my personality. You, you can't take it and hit the road. You, oh, I can take it. You can't take it, and that's why you're using those comics to no, get No, I can't man. take it. That's oh, just yeah, how I cope. How on. do you cope? You cope with anger, you but you okay. Can. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 oh, whoa, wait. Angry? Is it anger? I, well, I can second. be myself. Oh, wait, no, let me say this, Josh, because she's talking to me. I can be myself, and I don't have to front for a camera. Let me just say that, and that's always Miss TikTok Queen. Now, Josh, what were you going to say? It's the jealousy for me, but okay. Jealousy? I, pronunciate your words. I think we all want to hear that. Uh, Josh, what did you say? Okay, <laughs> so Derek is his own person. He can defend himself, but I'm just going to say this. I think the disagreement that Nicole and Derek had was 100% and purely game, and it would have stayed game. I think what is happening is that since then, no one can match Derek's energy once Nicole left. Like, when he got into a fight with Luke, Luke was up there. He was defending himself, but Luke stayed in the game, and they kind of, like, faded away a little bit, and Derek left. But no one else in this house could match Derek's energy, and Derek was always painted as angry and upset and Tessa I'm actually really kind of upset you would say he's angry you know what we go through as black people and to call another black man angry I just feel like that's just in such poor and bad taste and Derek has the utmost respect for a black woman and I feel like we look out for each other and you should do the same with Derek and that was just not okay hold on hold on can I say that I know that but I do feel like this is not a place to throw race in, and you cannot throw a race into something that's mm -hmm. unnecessary. Really? And I do feel like that. You're but, looking outside the point. It's always necessary to throw a race into it, especially no, when it's coming no, from No, like, not right woman. now, because you know, and I know that, and, and Josh, you know that I don't mean it as, like, an angry Black man. No, like, I'm not saying it that way. If I think anybody's getting angry, I'm going to say that, no matter who you are, no matter what race you are, because I respect my own just like he respects me. And then, Jeff, there's how it is. Mm -hmm. I love you, John Derek, to death, and Josh, I love you saying. to death. But no, no, but I'm not saying that because like you're black or whatever like what like that don't okay make i don't think you're understanding what i mean we like should, implicit should bias we can move on okay i'm just gonna say this we can move on implicit biases never have to be intentional and they never have to be on purpose they can be accidental and you may not even know you're doing it but when it's presented to you tessa that you're doing that take a step back and look at what we're saying because you're very defensive right now you're not understanding what we're saying you're trying to defend your name defend yourself but we're just letting you know hey that's not cool that's not cool at all, but we can move on because I don't think no, you No, but I just want to say, like, that's not what I'm doing. And, like, I you know what a bias that. is. Okay. I'm a psychology major. I study this stuff. I don't have a bias towards like, none of that. Well, sometimes people who have biases don't know that they have biases. And oh, trust exactly. me. I know that. I know that. Bingo. And, you know, like, and then, like, not just to attack you, but, like, you know, I, I'm a black person and sometimes I'm like, oh, he, like, you know, I'll say something like that, that's because they black, something like that, but that's because I'm saying that I'm, I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm used to hearing, like, you're used to hearing it around you, you start to actually be like, maybe that is, and then you got to take a step back and be like, that, that I didn't know that this was biased, but I'm going to think it over, and maybe what I'm thinking isn't necessarily true, or is maybe just through the, like, rose-colored eyeglasses that I'm seeing, but sometimes you just got to take a step back and be like, I understand that, and then even if you don't feel like you understand it, sometimes just be like, I understand where you're coming from and yeah yeah you're right i completely get where y'all coming from with that yeah all right well moving on i do not believe i yelled at nicole seems like nicole doesn't even believe i yelled at her I um that was just 100%. one person saying that what i think happened is something a, a game move happened we had a disagreement mm -hmm. we had an argument about it and it was it wasn't even a full argument we talked about it i've yelled and you guys did not see Oh, oh. I mean, Derek cut out, but so, that's it. Uh, Derek has definitely yelled at me. It was definitely not during the game, though. <laughs> yes. So that's what I said. That's exactly what I said. I, I, I know it. I know when yeah, Derek's yeah. yelling at me. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's that what I said. I said I yelled, and you guys did not see me yeah. yell. So yeah. none, and none of that was anything to do with any confessionals. I was more yeah. speaking to maybe comments I saw, um, or even feedback, or uh, maybe. Um, making more a generalized statement of I think our society and I get this a lot with my personality I I am vocal about the things I believe and I do push back and I think it does make a lot of society uncomfortable when people have conflict and I'm speaking from my perspective to say 
I didn't feel any negative feelings when Derek and I was having that conversation. And it feels like a lot of people around me and a lot of people that watched the show maybe felt uncomfortable that we were disagreeing. But I, I just using this as a platform to say, like, disagreement's healthy and disagreement's where growth comes from. And it doesn't always have to be painted as um, people hate each other or people have emotions involved or things. And Derek and I actually had a really good conversation um, when he got out round two or whatever mm -hmm. about that. And I think the same thing, I think we were talking about um, our relationships and stuff and saying the same thing where people sometimes perceive disagreement to mean emotional things. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to say like from some of the comments I saw that like there was, at least from my perspective, and it sounds like Derek's saying the same thing from his perspective, there was no emotion involved in any of the things that I was saying. Um, and it wasn't like hurt feelings. It was more like, I'm trying to explain where I think your game move was and he was disagreeing. And I think, it, I mean, he had every right to disagree and I had every right to disagree. So I don't know, that was that was my piece on it. I think that's the only thing like I can kind of add to the season is like, I, I felt like the audience maybe perceived the disagreement is negative and I don't think that disagreement is a negative thing. I think it's a positive thing. And I think that um, as long as you're keeping your feelings out of it and everybody's coming to a growth, you know, coming from a growth perspective, that it's a positive thing. So hopefully, hopefully somebody takes something from that. If they don't, meh. <laughs> I'd agree. I'd agree. And with all of that, it definitely was totem pole history. Thank you for that. Up next, this season was the season of baggage. Connor and Nicole and Luke and Jackie. I just want a quick update on where everyone is now. Have y'all overcome this baggage or not? Um, Jackie already knows that I love her. Um, yeah. After the season was over, we took a trip to San Antonio together right before COVID outbreak happened. And um, she was my real life defender. She saved my life. Thank you, Jackie. Love you so much. Love you um, too. <laughs> ever since then, um, I feel like we've been able to hang out more and kind of get back to where we used to be with our friendship. And I literally love that so much. Um, that's my piece anyway. Mm. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. I love you, Luke. And I feel like the show just like brought us back together. And it was really nice to like have that once we came back home. And then when COVID was hitting, um, we would talk all the time. So it just felt nice to like have my old friend back. Um, Connor and I weren't friends before, <laughs> uh, but we're, I think we're friends now. Um, I think that I had some of the most positive experiences of Totem Bowl with Connor. Um, he's just really a, a, a top-notch guy. I he, Great sense of humor, he's fun, doesn't take things too seriously. Uh, smart. Um, I'm really glad he did this show. I'm really glad that we like got to connect. Um, all of our relationship in the past was just, you know, once we had that negative first experience of me coming for him, you know, all of our game experience was kind of adversarial. Um, so hopefully we'll get a chance to play again sometime in the future, but I'm not going to set us up for having any targets, so we won't necessarily work together. When <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely say that. Lies. <laughs> you hush. My, my experience with Nicole before Totem Pole, like we would play games together. We never really got to know each other. It was always like we would come. She'd come after me without us even getting to know each other. And so I was like, I don't really know. Like I even said, my confessional, like I don't have the brightest view of Nicole, but that's because I haven't even like got to know her. Having the experience of Totem Pole, I'll openly say uh, she walked out there being one of my best buddies after that. Like, I really love Nicole. Like, I'm really glad we had this experience as well. And now that I actually got to talk to Nicole and get to know her, like, I really like her. Like, I really like her a lot. Like, so she's always, like, really nice and nurturing and just really fun to be around, honestly. So I'm really happy to have this experience and, uh, like, mend things a little bit with Nicole, most definitely. Thanks, Totem Pole. <laughs> Thank you, Totem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then next... Kadia coming into the game as a returning player and a little bit of a disadvantage with the boot. <laughs> Come on, boot. <laughs> Kadia's boot. Kadia, what was it like coming into the house and surprising everyone? A, to see their reaction, to see that they were playing this game against you. And then also B, what were your plans? Were you afraid that you would be a first boot? Or <laughs> did you think that you would Aww. make it far? <laughs> um, me. What was the first question? 
what was it like coming into the cat it's coming into the game and seeing the cast reaction that you were um oh honestly i didn't i don't know i never think that people are going to react the way that they react when they see me so it was it was it's always weird when people know you but you don't know them going mm. into a game um because i felt like like you know they can watch me from season one and they can study me and all this stuff but these people I'm saying these people like I don't know y'all all the people <laughs> that I love they come in they're brand new I don't know nothing from them I don't know them from Adam except like Jada and I knew a Maddie because we played a survivor like the summer before um I knew Tessa but like I knew of like we weren't like I want to say friend like we were associates I guess at the point oh hold up popularity and, and that was that was a little nerve-wracking i don't know <laughs> season one i came in the same way i went in season one i always tell wesley like oh i'm gonna be the first boot i'm not gonna make it past round one i'm so scared like i don't want to be go home first i was like at least, at least send me home second um and then i always make it for like i always supersede my expectations which i guess is is good oh, um, I, I wasn't aware that that was and just coming in i was i was ready to win it all until i got that boot i literally got that boot the like four days before we started filming and I told Wesley I was like I I was like I'm in a hospital I got a boot my foot is broken basically and he was like what well, can you still film I was like oh yeah I can still film I might just hop around everywhere but I can still <laughs> film and I was I really thought I was going to be first first boot home because I had a boot on and I really couldn't do anything but I wanted to go there and at least try and show you guys like I'm not going to give up because I was looking forward to coming back um I don't even remember how Wesley asked me to come back, but I was like, I'm down. I'm ready. To, I still want to come. I want to come back so many times just because I love the <laughs> total. And I feel like every time I get a little bit further, I got the same spot that I had um, first season, but there was more participants this season. So I feel like I got further, even though I got the same place. Um, so who knows? I might come back and just win the whole thing. <laughs> also into the yeah, cast. I, I, I'm going to come back and win totem pole at least yes. on, on yes. Like one in like Manifest. online games. But at least once I'ma come back and win it for y'all on the camera because I know y'all waiting <laughs> on it. I'm gonna open the floor to but the cast know, for some brief Trying discussion. To from moving up the ladder and getting this bag. I don't think she can hear us. Kadia, can you hear us? No, no, she can't. Can somebody text no, us? I don't know if y'all can hear me. I can't hear nobody. So yeah. <laughs> I can't hear you. Well, I can't hear anyone. Yeah, I'm. I was oh, trying. I put my thing on mute. That's why. Uh, <laughs> we hear you, girl. Can you From hear us now. She can't hear us. No. All right. Well, I, 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 I can hear you. I took it off oh, mute. Oh, okay. Uh, she had, she, she, she had her, no, she hears us now. She had her laptop oh, on no. mute. I was like, no wait, sound. <laughs> okay. Oh, period. Oh, my God. So I just love her vibe and her energy, and I was so excited that I was going to get to potentially play the game with her. So I was really excited to see her. Yay. I'm glad that um, I got to play with all you guys, because it, it's really different. Um it was really different compared to season one because season one we were all at the same school and I feel like it was a little bit of a disadvantage for me season one just because everyone knew each other a little bit more like oh bad English um a little bit more well than I did um so I like I definitely enjoyed season three because I came in I didn't know anyone but a lot of people didn't know each other either so I felt like that was a fresh like slate that everyone could really get into so I like that I, for one, just want to say that I didn't realize that I could request to not be first boot and to be second boot. So I would like to go back and put that <laughs> request in. <laughs> yes, time machine. I was just like, I just I don't want to be the first one out. That's all I, that's all I pray for. Wait, Nicole. Okay, in the buyback, you got third place, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So technically, Jada's first boot now. Oh yeah, the girl didn't count. Jada, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, no, it's fine. I mean, we're going back in time or rewriting history. I'm just say, I'm just gonna say, I was first and leave off the boot part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this season also was the season of trios. We had real trios and we had fake 
trios. <laughs> Going into this first one, Maddie, Jada, and Asher, the three of you were branded <laughs> as a trio. What was it like whenever you discovered this information? What did you find out on the show when we were filming? Did you find out after when we were watching? I'm going to open the floor to you, Maddie, and you, Jada, to talk about this trio. Well, I, I mean, I learned it while we were filming, kind of, but I learned more about it when I watched the show back, because I didn't really know, like, who started it, like, what happened, because when we were filming, I was hearing, like, hints of things, like, oh, people think that you actually, but I, I didn't think it was, like, as big of a deal as it was. Like, watching it back, I was like, dang, so everybody really thought, hmm, okay. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. I was like, well, first of all, I think what really did it for people was Madison running around because I, like, I, I know, like, me and Asher were together. Like, that was a thing. But I, we didn't really have as many interactions with Madison. So I was so confused as to why people all of a sudden thought, like, we were connected. Because I was like, she's off doing her own thing. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. I've heard her say three different things. I don't know. So I was like, she's on her own train somewhere. And I thought everybody else was going to catch that. But nah. Uh, it, I, like, it ended up just being worse because people thought that it was shady that she was trying to be like, I'm not a part of this trio and I'm voting for this person. And now I'm going to vote for this person and I'm telling you I'm voting for this. Like, so everybody was like, oh, this is shady. She must be in this trio because she's running around trying to save her butt. But no, she really was just running around doing her own Madison thing. She wasn't worried about me or Asher. And so I was like, I was just really shook by it. I was like, what is this? Like, why does this have to be a thing? But it's all right, whatever. I mean, I don't really think it's fair to put it all on Madison because if we've seen all the footage and in every single scene, you and Asher were hit to hip. So uh, we can't put it all on Madison because y'all were two and she was that one. So if we're going to say a trio, y'all were y'all made up more of that trio. So listen to me right now. Okay. I don't think it's all on Madison. I think it's definitely like me and Asher were a thing. It's not all yeah. Madison. But I'm saying like Madison being like doing her own thing kind of made it seem to people because somebody said I don't know if it was a confession or something but somebody said it made it seem really sketchy that she was running around like that oh no she was and working so they, hard that's definitely true yeah like with, my heart breaks for for Jada honestly it really does she got you got screwed over by this really really hard I do want to say, I do think you and Asher probably could have separated a little bit more. Yeah, at the beginning um, of the whole trio thing being spread around during round one, I, after like a good maybe 15, 20 minutes of like the socializing aspect of the game or of that round, I could tell that Maddie wasn't part of that tr trio. I knew that you and uh, Asher though were close <coughs> because you were in every room together. And so it stood out like a sore thumb. So to me, I was trying to work with you guys but everyone else was going after you guys so i felt horrible because i tried to help but it clearly <clears throat> didn't work yeah sorry jada what'd you say <laughs> no you're good go i was just gonna say like anything that i would have said about the trio y'all would have like y'all just like did it like y'all i don't know how to say it my brain is fine right now, but like y'all didn't believe me. Like y'all just thought I was saying it because I was part of it, but I really wasn't. And it kind of just like put a target on their back to begin with. And then it kind of just like put a target on my back for the rest of the game. I so it was just one of those things. Like it was just one, it was a big play move that kind of just like affected all three of our games. And I think because it was like one of the first like main like ideas of that first round, like it's so much easier just to like attach on to that and just to keep going with it. Even if like you're saying like, oh, I'm not a part of it. It's just easy to be like, okay, well, she's lying. Let's just keep going. Cause like that way the target's not on you, it's on them. And it's really hard, especially like when it first gets going to like separate that and to really realize, okay, this is not what's happening. But, and so let's figure out a new plan. It's easier to just go with that first plan that somebody else said, and it's, you know, not in your hands, it's somebody else. So like, like looking back at it, watching it, I was like, wow, I'm really stupid. I was like, this is so dumb. Like, why did I do that? Like, why did I think this was a real thing? Like, cause like when you watch it, like my boyfriend or fiance now, um, when he was watching it, he was like, so pissed. <laughs> he was like, he was like, how are you guys like, it, who cast these people? Like, he was like, 
Okay, but like Dang. Sabrina, you're valid though. They didn't give us a reason not to believe. Yeah, exactly. Like during like, the game, perception's reality. So that's what it is, and it's easy to just go with it. But like watching back, of course, it's totally different. And you're like, whoa, like this is like ridiculous. Like, why is this happening? But yeah, it's so different, like watching it and like being in the moment for sure. Like you only know what you know in yeah. each room. And once you watch it back, it's completely different. And I like didn't see half the things that I knew right. until it aired. So it was just a, it's a different experience watching it. Yeah, yeah I also think it like would have played out differently if I actually knew, like if I actually knew what was going on. Because I had like hints of like, oh, people might think, but I didn't know how big of a deal it really was. Yeah. Like, people were really trying to get us out. Like, I thought it was just, like, oh, this is strange. Like, I don't know what's going on here. Um, and so, I feel like if I knew, like, that this was an actual issue, like, people were really, like, we got to get Jade out because she's working with these people. Like, I think I would have played out a lot differently for me, or I would have at least approached it differently. Yeah, I really think so, too, because I feel like if it was, like, all three of y'all, like going separately and being like we're, we're not a thing like I think I would have been more inclined to like go that direction and be like yeah maybe this isn't really what's going on but it was just Maddie doing that and then you and Asher were still together so I was like well maybe she's just trying to throw things off like but I think so too I think it would have gone out way differently had y'all been more aware of what was going on for sure yeah honestly that's why I was so nervous coming into the game like no, like seeing and knowing that Jackie was going to be there I thought the same thing was going to happen to me like oh well you obviously know of Jackie like you've known her for a while so like obviously you're probably going to eventually form up to be a duo or something. So that's a hundred percent where like the notions of like, even just like the smallest hint of a relationship can just boop target. And then we also had a real trio that some would say steamrolled the team to the final three. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> So I want to open the floor to the cast. Were y'all aware of this trio that was happening from almost the very beginning of the game? I think in the back of my head, I had an idea because I, t I, the, um, me and Luke had talked at one point and we said that we needed to get Shane and Sabrina out because they were working closely with Josh. Ooh. And also we felt like they were easier to get out because we weren't sure where your gameplay laid at the time especially with Shane, just because they were like, it was like a, a more quiet, under the radar type game, which is, which is really good. But also at, um, I don't know, like, you know, in the jury, um, I don't know if it showed all of it, but you know, in the jury, we were just like, what, well, what, the, like, what was their gameplay? And I think that's where there was a hang up with that. But it also did work out in your advantage, just because like you were able to work so well together and kind of like get other people out. I mean, get other people out, I guess. I don't know. You know you want to say it. You know you want to say it. <laughs> I mean. Wait, y'all had no, y'all had no participation <laughs> of getting me out. I just want to say that. that. Just, oh, Derek. So, y'all yeah, they... didn't steamroll me. Y'all might have steamrolled some other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they were a good alliance, but I don't think they, you know, had their hand in too many decisions of people leaving this season. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. And I also don't think... Just because, like, I think towards the very end, it definitely was more so, like, mistakes that were made, not so much, like, our own, like, actual decisions being yeah. made. Yeah. 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 That's so right. that's why that's why I have a hang-up on the steamroll comment, too. Yeah. But y'all were a good alliance. I will give y'all that, though. It was very small Wait, wait, through. I think, wait, before we... A lot of things that we... happened, happened, like, y'all might not have had, like, a personal hand of what happened, but it, it was a part of your agenda of what you wanted. Like, can I just say this? I kind of, like, in my gameplay, whenever I make a move, it is to send a message. So at final nine, when I put Luke down there, yes, well, he yeah, was my absolutely. target. Wait, wait a second. He was my target, and I wanted him to go home. He didn't go home, but that seed was already there just waiting for some water. So, and Derek, <laughs> you put some water in that seed, do 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 it went home. Not because of you, though, Josh. No, I didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give me that seed to plant the seed to me. I, 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 I voted for Luke. Jason, that happened because of Jason. Okay, but yeah. you voted for Luke for certain reasons. Me putting Jace, Luke down yeah. there prompted, yes, because of him and Jace. We would have never known Luke and Jace were that close had I never put either of them in danger. 
So I think I deserve some credit in that sense. Also, can we talk about that all the on Luke and that round on Josh, but Luke at the bottom? I gave Josh the soil so he could plant his seed for that round. So um, does that does that make me the plant? <laughs> yeah. Seed, the seed. You're the beautiful flower. <laughs> oh, period. I knew what I'd say so that. Um... So who was the dirt? Me. Was I? <laughs> I wait, 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 wait. I Luke unburied himself and tried to bury me. But I reversed that thing and ah, yes. right back down. Wait, not kill Bill. Not kill <laughs> Bill. No, Wait, no. we need to stop with the flower analogies. I know, it's getting confusing. I do want to <laughs> say that, like, in terms of, like, the trio being, like, a thing, like, so, like, I was always trying to keep my eyes open for things, like, even when I wasn't in a conversation or just walking around aimlessly, like I tended to do. And one part that I really noticed is it was round three, and it was round, I, Jace went on top of the totem pole, and... It, I think like Wesley gave like, okay, get ready to come back in the living room. You got like two, whatever, like five minutes. And what I noticed is I saw that um, Shane, Sabrina and Josh, like within that last quick second, all ran together. And like, I think it was like one of the bathrooms where it was like a room really, really fast and talked. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, admit, like why, why else would you need to like go last minute before a round starts if you're not an alliance and so I saw that and I was really upset at myself because I saw that and I was going to use that if I stayed the reason I went to Josh really that round to like go brain pull with Josh not to get too far ahead is because I knew he had four other people but I was going to use that if I stayed but I saw that and I wasn't even a tribute like, I wasn't even close to this whole seven eight nine but I feel like you don't need to be close to see certain things. If you just pay attention, look around, see when people go to certain rooms together, you can kind of pinpoint things. You don't have to be a part of a cluster to see these things. And I was yeah. I was very happy that I at least saw. And when I saw they were the final three, I was so upset at myself. I was so annoyed. I was like, oh, God. Uh, Connor, you were like the Connor first was... on camera that like mentioned the three of us. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, was like, I didn't know you like knew that early. Like yeah. I had no, I had no wow. idea. I had no clue that you had like a concept of what we were yeah you should have used it Derek what were you going to try to say well I was just going to ask Connor because I think this is the same, this is the same episode where Shane said that he saw Connor or saw Jason Connor having a conversation yeah and Jace asked Connor you know hey Connor what information did you bring for me in this moment so mm -hmm. I was just going to ask Connor if that was true and um is that trio something, some of the information that Connor would have reported back to Jace? So it was very interesting watching it back because that conversation with me and Jace, I don't recall it at all. Mm -hmm. Like I never recall Jace saying, hey Connor, what information did you bring me? We, I was working kind of closely with Jace, but at that point, like I wouldn't even say Jace was like my closest ally. He was one of the people I was closest with, but I was just trying to find my place. And so by no means was I reporting things stuff back to Jace. At no point at all did I give Jace any information about anything in the house. At no point did I run back say, I got this this for you master like i got this for you big old great day like <laughs> do any of that like for me i'm playing my own game i'm using him because he's a great player but at no point did i go hey this is for you like no and um, I'll, I'll chime in too because i was the one who said that jace had asked you what information did you get i don't know I don't remember if it was those exact words but he i walked into that room with you and him and i don't remember who else is in there but you came in after me i think luke might have been in there but you came in and Jace looks at you and goes, what information did you get? Something along those lines. And just like you paid attention to that little thing of me, Sabrina and Josh running into that side room right before the vote. It was in that moment that I had an idea that you and Jace were working together. So before that vote, maybe yeah. I, I don't remember the conversation I had with Josh and Sabrina, but maybe it was me going to say, hey, we need to get Connor out. I don't remember, but that definitely was something that pushed me to vote for you. Yeah, I, I definitely was in the room for that conversation. Um, and he didn't, I don't think he said those exact words, but he's definitely said something along the lines of it. And I remember being in that room thinking, oh, this is sus. Cause like, so whenever Connor's name started gaining traction, I was like, oh no, this, like, I feel like Connor is closer to Jace than I am at this point, And I don't like that. And it felt immediately threatening to me. So I was like, that's why I, I ha personally have to vote Connor like for my own agenda. Yeah. Me and him were definitely close. And I think if I remember correctly, I think it was around where we're trying to figure out the vote. And like, I think he remembered, like, I, he's like, hey, what, did you hear anything about the vote? And I feel like that's more what he was addressing. Like, hey, did you yeah. hear anything about the vote's gonna go? Cause we had the plan with Madison. Hmm. He wanted to see if like, oh, is Madison still gonna be the, the vote? And that's, I think more so where it was centered. Yeah. I and, think I, it was more, yeah that. and I think personally <laughs> also like you, 
the, the fact that Jace had said that to you, in my mind, I was like, I am gunning for Jace in the game. I never had power to go after him. But since round one, when he was at the bottom, I was trying to get him out and never gained traction. But throughout the whole game, had I had power, Jace would have been at the bottom of my totem pole. So my goal was to try and weaken Jace as much as possible. So if you were working with Jace, I wanted you gone. I wanted to weaken Jace so we didn't have numbers. So when he said that and you were brought up as like a potential ally, I was like, Connor needs to go. Mm-hmm. And I definitely wanted to work with Jace because like I like one thing I noted is when like they both walked in the returnees, everyone's going, Kadia, Kadia, like jumping up and down like crazy. And Jace had a much more like it was a good reaction still, but it wasn't as crazy as Kadia. And I'm like, okay. Why like I feel like so many people are gonna go to Kadia. So many people are gonna try and work with Kadia. I don't feel like as many people are gonna do that with Jace. And Jace is gonna be good at these physical competitions. Something clearly I'm not gonna be able to do. So I'm like, okay. I'm going to try and work with Jace. I feel like he'd have a lot less people going to him. So I was definitely working with him, but I wouldn't say that I was working for him. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is not something I would say. Yeah. And then another conversation that happened, and this is a good segue into this next segment. Connor, you and Derek and Jace had a conversation about saving Derek because Derek had a plan for Kadia to put him at the bottom of the totem pole and he would select either you or Jace to be his defender. Derek selects Connor to be his defender, and Connor, what was going through your head whenever you went into the defender room? Did you know that you were gonna take power, or what was going through your mind there? So for me, like, I do wanna clarify, I said on my confessional that me and Derek hadn't talked. I wanna specify what I meant by that. We did talk, but the previous round, the very first round, but I wouldn't say I had more conversation with Derek than I had everyone else. I feel like my conversations for the most part was with pretty much anyone. And so in that mind, it didn't make sense to me. Like, like Derek would call, like, from what I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, I kind of got like, hey, I kind of got called in, me and Jace did. And so in that moment, hey, want to talk about this, whatever. And for me personally, like, it didn't make a whole lot of sense because this dude already said Josh was his number one, like in the competition. And I know he like, his like, got like pull and so I was like why is he pulling me aside and that moment I'm like listen I have to like take advantage of this right I didn't really ask to be in this position but if he's gonna like want to like pull me in here or like want to like talk with me about this I'm gonna take full advantage of it and so I will say if the baggage choice was different I feel like we might have a different outcome because if I'm just like saving him I get none of the like repercussions of the baggage twist for it that's a great shield for me the issue then being with the baggage twist of oh if I have to put an echo line for him you know, when I shook his hand and said, I will save you, in my mind, I was already knew I was lying to him. Just for the simple fact that I I already kind of went through the variables in my head and at no point did I question. I, maybe I should have thought about it more, but I don't really regret my decision. I really was like, okay, if he picks me, I'm going to send him home for the simple fact that, like, he has tons of pull here. And he's being a bit, like, you know, I, not almost a bit chaotic in the sense of, like, he's very much a big figure here. And, like, I don't know how much I can trust that personally. You know, so that I would, yeah. It's funny to say that because that was actually round one. Well, the only thing I had done after round one was take the power on the call. So what did I do that was so chaotic? Say Karma's Kiss. So what exactly was so chaotic that had you so scared kind of that you had to take power? What was it? Well, it was the fact not only that, but it was also round two because this was round two when KDP at the bottom. Clapgate, like you were very much a, I want to say chaotic figure, like you definitely had your emotions going crazy. And, you know, when I'm looking for an ally, I want to look for someone that in my eyes is someone that I can rely on. And in that moment with you kind of being like, like, very like, you know, you're all over the place. I felt like I can't rely on that. And so in that sense, I feel like, and for the most part, the house was like, everyone's pretty tame. But when you have that one person kind of that is not so tame. Boring, not tame, boring. I mean, you can call what you want to call it, but what I'm saying is, Derek, is, like, I, I didn't feel like I could rely on you because of how you were playing so far, you, like, how everything that happened. And so I feel like it's not only just the first round, it's that second round, too, because, you know, that whole situation that happened with the baggage competition and moving things and all that. I hear you, Connor. What I truly think it was was round one, Jace, or round two, that same round, Jace put me as his number one on his board. You wanted to be Jace's number one, and when that didn't work out for you, or you saw that Jace wanted to be closer to me than it was to you, so you decided to take power on it and take me out that round. You don't have to agree to that. That's just what I feel, and that's how I feel in that moment. And I Karma like got her too. kiss. Karma got her I kiss, like and um, we see how it uh, turned out for um, you. 
And I respect how you feel. Now, let me tell you how I felt and why I really think you chose me, if I may. I really think you chose me because you saw me as someone you could, like, say, hey, not like, I feel like you saw me as someone that wouldn't have the cojones looking in the eye and send you home. I feel like you saw me, Derek, if we're going to play this game, as someone who's just going to sit there and, like, oh, Connor would never take power of me. He would never have the boss look me, Derek, in the eyes. And I did. So if you want to talk about without even Connor, talking what about are it, you what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's what I, 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 you said I, what you I, I told you. What I it has nothing to do about you having a boss. So and don't mine has nothing to do with Jade. But you let me, to let me, to I'll let you speak. i let you speak, Connor. Let me speak. Thank you. Well, I wasn't done, do actually, about... when you interrupted me before I was actually finished. All right, well, finish, Connor. Finish, Connor. Finish. You don't have to get upset, but like for me, like do just finish. I'm not. I'm not going to worry about this. I mean, exactly. Listen. Don't don't say that I came at you because I feel like you're trying to say it's because of the disability and I chose you and I said, oh, kind of oh, would okay, never okay, choose. Okay, no, hold on. Again, you put these words in my mouth for the second time. Huh? Let me speak. At no point did no, I say that. Let me speak. I, I don't care what you said. I'm saying what I'm saying. Thank you. You're saying that, oh, I chose you because, oh, Connor won't have the boss to do this. He's this nice guy. He'll just do this. No, we had conversations. We choked. There was footage of us in a room looking for an advantage card together, Connor. So I genuinely trusted you in that moment. It had nothing to do about what I felt like anything. So don't do that. That's what we're not going to do. Uh, okay, here's that's my question. why I came to you and said to you that in that moment. Your question my is point. what? How come you get to say that the reason you did this because of Jace, right? And then I get to say a similar thing, the reason why I think, and then suddenly, Connor, why are you saying that? You did the same thing to me two sentences ago, Derek. And you also, said because I'm of what you done. were saying. I'm not done. Because you, well, you, you asked me a question. You asked no, me a no, question. No, no, no. I'm right not right finished, though. My mouth was not you're, shut. You're, you're you're gonna, oh, you're yelling. Now you're yelling and upset. Because, right, why because are you you're upset? a hypocrite, because you were yelling at people interrupting you, and I was not finished speaking. I wasn't finished speaking. Okay, let me tell you how I felt, please. Because I was not finished speaking. You're so upset. You're turning I wasn't red, finished Connor. speaking, Derek. I was not You're finished speaking. Red. Finish. May I finish? Because it seems like you're just going to keep talking. Absolutely. You're turning red. Calm down. Finish. I'm not turning red, dude. You don't have to worry about that. What I'm saying finish. is... I'm trying, Derek. I'm speaking. Finish, I am Connor. freaking trying. Will you let me speak for the love of God? You don't let no. anyone speak. You're doing all of this. All you have to do is say what you have to say. You don't have to do and that. I'm trying, and I'm trying. And I'm trying. Okay. You don't tell me when I, end, when I go and when I don't go. Get that straight, please. Second of all, go. you don't get to tell me that. You don't get to do that. Second of all, now that I get to speak, so thank you, Derek. Now that I get to speak, now that I get to speak. I got a better place than you. Now that I get to speak. matters to me. I don't care. Now that I get to speak. I'm not, I can be here all night, Derek. Now that I get to speak, I want to address. We know you have a job. Go. Now that I get to speak, Derek, I would like to quickly address you saying about the autism comment. My thought process had nothing to do with me being autistic and you seeing me. That's not what I said. That is not what I said. That is not what I thought at all. I am self-aware enough to know that I'm a quiet, can be a quiet person. I walk around. I'm not the most talkative person ever. I'm not. I'm not the one talking to anyone. I can see how some, and I was voted the weakest. I can see how someone would look at me and say he's quiet. He's viewed as the weakest, right? And maybe like, and it has nothing to do with the autism. Don't put that out there. Don't put that in my mouth. It has nothing to do with that at all. What I'm saying is I can see how someone would view me as someone that like, oh, like kind of like the, like the nerds on Big Brother, right? The nerdy guys who are quiet and awkward. People view them. And it has nothing to do with any about their mental or anything. It has everything to do with the fact that they're how they are. And so I was like, okay. And Yes, we agreed, but what I was addressing the fact in terms of that, like why you would choose me is what I'm saying when you called me in for the room. You called me, and I'm saying you called me in there. Yes, we had that conversation. I had a lot of different conversations that round that weren't shown. I had conversations with pretty much like every, every person I could. So yes, we had our moment, but I felt like I had other moments with other people. So in my mind, it didn't make sense for you to choose me. I, I like Or not to choose me, bring me in that room with Jace, right? That didn't make sense at all. So that was already a red flag in my mind. And, and that's what I'm saying when you called me in. That's why I felt like, and you get to say how you feel. I get to say how I feel. And it's equal. So I, I have that right. And that's why uh, how I We feel. can move that's on. That's, that's what you, probably feel. you did the same thing I did to Nicole, but yours is justified. So we can move on. All right. And then we had a battle back between the first four eliminated players. And it was quite close for a moment there. And it was fun to watch, especially. So Derek, I know you said this a million times, how bad you wanted to be there and how bad you wanted to win. And I think it really showed in the way that you played in the game and in the battle back. So I wanna ask you about what 
it was like playing in that battle back and then returning back into the game. Absolutely. I didn't come all the way to Arkansas, you know, to go home when I did, especially not after someone shook my hand and said that they would save me. So when I went out, Nicole, you can look like that, but I never shook your hand and say that I would save you first boot. So after I went out, I went downstairs and I chilled myself. I took a shower. I relaxed and I got my head in the game. I knew that I had something that I had to finish because I started something and it wasn't over. And um, battle back started. And uh, yeah, I came out on top, got back to the game and all the rest from there. But I was very stoked to have won that competition. Um, I didn't know what the competition was going to be going up there. Obviously, I saw the competition and, uh, you know, I felt good about it. But uh, with balance, I know that my hands get shaky with kind of when it comes to like balance and things like that, especially when there's pressure on the line. So that part had me nervous, but it came out on top. So I was good with that. Anybody else want to add to that? <laughs> um, no, but I will say <laughs> this, just so I don't move on too far from it. Um, Derek and Connor, I will say, um, the way you both handled the last conversation, um, it was good. Um, and Connor, you stuck up for yourself like you needed to. And Derek, you said what you had to say. Um, but um, you both should walk away. Connor, especially you, you really... I think you got across exactly what you wanted to say. And um, that's period. That's, I think that's it. I didn't want to leave before because I would have been too far, but yeah, I just had to say that. So, so where, are we, where are we at in the game? <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> all over the oh, you missed a lot. You missed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're at the battle back portion or a little bit after the battle back. Okay. Wait, I do have a question though for since Jada and, and Nicole are here. Um, when watching the battle back, because none of us had seen it until the episode came out, I was very curious and kind of shocked that it seemed like you guys like almost stood there most of the time when Derek came for you guys to knock your blocks down. What was why didn't you guys move around to like go after Derek a little bit? If that's what if you guys were kept saying Derek is gonna win, why didn't you go after him? We zig. I was intimidated. I was in that corner. And I was looking at him. And I was like, nah, nah. <laughs> I think I just really, I was like, I was like, bro, first of all, it was like after that experience of being voted out and I didn't even know my name was going to be said. So I was sitting there like, dang, they really got their info. Okay. And so I go outside and they're like, it's a battle back. And I was like, ah. so I go out there and it said, it's the game with the blocks. And I was like, for real? Okay. And then we start the game and he's sitting over there walk in and I was like I was um, just defeated at the time I'm gonna say I don't think you guys could see how fast Derek was mm -hmm. like he crossed that yard like that like he was on the other side um okay. the first time maybe the second time he threw the blocks in the air and we had to redo that round um I think that was probably our last chance like he went a little bit slower that round but once he got his footing, and I don't know, Derek, if that felt that way to you, but, I mean, I felt like I held the box. He said, go. I took two steps, and Derek was in front of me. Like, he, <laughs> he, he's got long legs. He's fast. He's athletic. And I am none of those things. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, Derek's legs are significantly longer than him. Bro, that <laughs> man was halfway across the field, and I was like, it's really like that. Yeah. And y'all expect me to just hit this man's yeah. blocks with my tiny arms. Okay. So, so my strategy, literally, the last round was I put my blocks right by my boobs, because I'm like, maybe he won't try to touch my boobs. <laughs> and his arm was so long that he went around my boobs, behind my boob, and not <laughs> From behind, like his arms were twice the length of mine. And you can see in that one, I reached for his blocks and I covered to here on his body. Mm -hmm. I could reach to here and his arms out here. Like, I don't know what I could have done. So, so it was like the circumstances of the challenge just didn't play in your guys' favor almost. I mean, I think the, the problem was it was one of the tallest first people in the game versus mm -hmm. the three shortest people in the game. I mean, <laughs> it definitely did not, did not play to our advantage. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe if all three of us had tried to circle him in, but then even then the way the game worked is he would have went out one round and then would have been right back in. I mean, mm -hmm. at, at the end, it's always going to be head-to-head, -head, so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I felt like we tried quite a few different things, but, like, I mean, yeah. Derek's athletic. He's, yeah. 
he's tall, strong, and fast. So, like, I mean, yeah. I mean, you do get defeated a little bit at the time, mm-hmm. though. <laughs> I will say Jade is not Nicole, wrong with that. to sum that up about Derek, you could just say he is the moment. Like, the moment! <laughs> like, just sum it all up. Like, this really, truly was the Derek show, mm-hmm. however you put it. So. Yeah, that, I mean, it was definitely, um, I think, you, I mean, it's literally on camera. When I walked out, <laughs> I looked at the challenge, I looked up and I said, Congratulations, Derek. <laughs> like, like I legitimately said that on it's on the film. The mm-hmm. only thing I will say about the battle back, um, two things that from the editing perspective, I loved how when Asher was like the sportsmanship comment, y'all didn't know because you didn't see because Derek was in and out of the comp so fucking fast. You didn't get to see any of his. And then I hate, and I don't even know if Derek knows this, but like he was going around telling everybody bye to go back in, and he side hugged me. And Asher behind me goes, you know, they're just going to send you right back out. And I looked at, I think it was Zane, had the camera in my face, and I went, like, this. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera is on me, but it just, it's, the editing was so split second fast. I don't know. I just thought it was the funniest moment because it obviously didn't work, and he killed it and got to the end. But, like, it was just so funny because she's like, they're going to send you right back out. And Eric's looking at her and talking to her, and I looked at the camera and went, <laughs> <laughs> So that was my, that was the funnest part of about, that was the funnest part of the buyback for me. <laughs> that was the biggest lie of the season saying that they were going to send me right back out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, a miss hope, a, mi- a miss wish. <laughs> <laughs> the next it was thing. a good guess though. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, Russell. yeah. No, we okay. thought it was very possible because of the way yeah. you went out that they might yeah. send you back. I think I would say, and I could be wrong, and I mean, everybody else could be back in, but, like, you coming back in and getting set out of the challenge, I think, was one of the best things that happened for you, because it took all eyes off of you. Mm -hmm. That whole challenge, you got to sit there and be a passive observer, see how people were interacting, who was working together, and not be a focus. So, I don't know if you felt that way or if anybody else felt that way. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's obviously hindsight, because in that moment, I was like, Cute be words only. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had a you before you got like before you had eliminated, of course. But I felt like after yeah. you came back after that battle back, oh, you was out for blood, baby. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And I made that known when I came back into the house too. So yes, yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I would also like just real fast love to explain. I know we talked we'll touch on this a little bit about the decision to sit Derek out. I mean, I know I, I feel like we I never really got the chance to explain why I did it, and I feel like I'd love to just take the moment to like. Because I not, I mean, I, it's tough because I didn't really get a chance to explain it. But the biggest reason why, there was a couple of reasons to why I chose in that moment to sit Derek out. It did kind of play into the fact of I don't really have an issue with anyone else. Whereas Derek, there is that something there. It also has to do with the fact that, like, Tom Paul's a very fast game. And between him coming back and that challenge, there was no time for us to communicate and, like, even just nod or, like, hey, are we good? Are we good? Like, hey, let's talk it out, hash things out. There was no time. Um, the third one I want to make to that that was really in my mind in that moment as well is like, you know, this dude, Derek, you 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 invented Karma's kiss. Like that is yours. That is your trophy. In my mind, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, now that he's back, he invented Karma's kiss. I don't want to be Karma's kissed. Like I haven't had time to like talk with him. If he comes back, I don't know. Like when I say I don't know what he's coming back at me with, I don't know like if he's gonna have vengeance on his mind because like the karma's kissing got my head as well and like for me i know it was talked on like you know you should give him more of a shot i want to clarify that when we finally got a chance to talk me and derek shook each other's hands when we were both in the bottom i believe at that one part and I, behind the couch and i said i'm not gonna gun for you you're not gonna gun for me in that mo- in that moment in my mind that's where everything hashed out now we're even now i know we're cool and i didn't even say derek's name once because i needed that time to talk with Derek and once I had that time I did not mention Derek name to go at all I know some people are like well, Connor why didn't you go in for Derek because I guess it's the timing people saw things differently in that moment but for me I needed that time to talk to Derek once I had that time we were cool and I wasn't going to gun for him anymore that round and so that's yeah. what I wanted to like, kind of explain a little bit you know kind of like I said I always say like I 100% understood why you do it why you did it because like I said you just sent me home it's the same power but me personally there being the person that is being done on it just doesn't feel good obviously so of course I'm gonna have some feelings about it of course I'm gonna have something to say about it and I think all that's you know 
fair. You know, I'm allowed to feel type of way after you did what you did. So they said, I always understood the game side of it, but just personally, that was just what I was saying. A hundred percent. And I know like, I, I, I completely understand that in that position being set out just after coming just back, after just coming back in and being shut out. Like I understand how that would like 100% make you upset. And I, mm -hmm. and I, that's hundred percent valid. I just wanted to like kind of clarify. I know some people were like, well, Connor, you seeing Derek out seems personal. Nothing I did was ever personal. I don't blame you for taking something that personal or being upset about it. But for me, everything I did was with my mind and strategic. That's right. something I wanted right. I mean, yeah, I do understand that just because, like, you kind of, I mean, y'all burned a bridge earlier on in the game, and so you didn't want to create any new friction between anyone else. So I do understand that from a gameplay. All right, I'm going to move on to the next challenge, and I want to start by setting the record straight that in the next round, Josh's top of the totem pole win was fair and square, and he found that on his own, and he deserved that top of the totem pole win. <laughs> However, Sabrina did tell him one word, balcony. Josh took a leap of That's faith. That's the only thing he had on the board. It was balcony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Josh took a leap of faith, went out to the balcony, and then it was a mad scramble with the majority of the cast on the challenge searching for that top of the total pole necklace. But I know okay. there was a lot of people who had comments <laughs> after because they put in hard work to try to solve it. <laughs> Except for if your name is Luke and you're eating fruit snacks in the room. Um, yes, I really don't remember everyone being out on that balcony like that. I'm trying to figure out where I was at because I everyone, everybody was on the balcony looking for that necklace. I think I was still in there trying to figure out the puzzle. <laughs> but the challenge didn't say unscramble everything, tell me what it says. And then I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I he, he hacked that challenge, though, Josh. Well, yeah, it didn't say that, but fans are just feeling like it would probably be, you know, make a little sense if you had but to, what if you, you like, know, come like, here with that. Yeah, say the phrase yeah, I'm gonna go get the necklace. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to say it. I deserve praise for that. And the fans, <laughs> Agree. And you know, I am crazy. <laughs> you, I'm Josh. not going to say what I'm, look, I'm not going to say what I'm really thinking, because you know what? It ain't about that, but I will say oh, that. Oh, go ahead. Say what you're really thinking. No, no. No, I'm good. I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to drive these fans like that. But I will say this. Has this been <laughs> anybody else, anybody else who made a move like this in the game, who just got the word balcony and was smart enough to go out on the balcony and look for it? All the praise. All the not praise. But it was not Lou, Josh. Uh-uh. Yeah, not 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 right. 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 They would have been like, that's not fair. That's not fair. Not, not fair. <laughs> I would have said the same <laughs> thing if it was Jack, Sabrina, Shane, <laughs> Santa Claus. I would have said that. Kadia, you could have won the challenge with that boot. <laughs> you could have won the challenge with that boot, but you I didn't. could have, but you didn't give me a chance I, because I, you. You had every chance, baby girl. What was your line? There was James. Where was Luke? Sabrina? Oh, hey, Sabrina. My alliance. <laughs> working together. Where's the strategy? We had strategy. Where's the strategy? <laughs> do not. You are, you are triggering something in the back of my brain that I do not want to hear. Do not say exactly. that. Exactly. Don't come at me for where there's no strategy. Uh, where's it at? No, baby girl. You're getting red tonight. Where's the strategy? Me, Sab, <laughs> and Shane, we had it. Period. I mean, I didn't really have it. Sabrina helped you, and I was struggling. <laughs> but you guys did it. I'm happy. I'm talking about as the alliance. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we did it. We did it. Yeah, I did it. We had it. But me, me and Sabrina, though, we worked together really well on that challenge. Mm -hmm. I can't say the same for you and Miss Jace and Miss. Um, baby, I don't need nobody to carry me to the finish line. I'm trying to get there by myself. Oh, you said I, I was carried. You said I was carried. Say it again. Say it again. You don't want to do this. Mm -mm. I don't want what now? I don't want what? You don't want this, Miss Boo. You was carried to well, I want all of it. Give it to me. Uh-uh. No, you ain't getting none of it. You don't deserve it. Moving on. <laughs> all right. Also, shortly after, we had yet another trio, the Pinky Promise Alliance, Shane, Jackie, and Maddie. Unfortunately, it was short-lived. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> But my question cool. for you, Shane, at this point, you have two trios that you're mm -hmm. a part of. Was your strategy to work with both of them to pick one over the other? What was your game plan moving forward whenever you were you had your hand in two baskets? So here's my perspective on the two alliances that I had. Josh and Sabrina, I felt like their footing in the game, they were fine. Like they weren't struggling. 
Maddie and Jackie, on the other hand, were in the bottom almost every single time. Everyone was gunning for them. So in my mind, I took the opportunity when everybody ran away to go, I think it was either Jace or Josh who had won. I think it was Josh had won. Everybody went to go talk to him. The three of us found ourselves just standing in the living room, last three. I grabbed them. We all kind of came together. And I proposed this alliance because they're at the bottom. If they manage to stay this round and one of them wins next round, I'm fine. I'm not in danger with Maddie or Jackie. They're, they're more than likely going for the people that have been gunning for them this entire game. So with Josh and Sabrina, yeah, I'm working with them, but I'm trying to cover all my bases. And if I could have gone to final five with them, that would have been great. Like I had my bases covered. However, they did get knocked out that round, which was really bad at the time, but I still managed to make it to the end. So in hindsight, they really saved me the next round when Jace was top of the totem pole and I became the switch. So thank you, Maddie and Jackie, like so much. And then also I want to talk about Maddie with two cards in the season. They came after you round after round after round. And it took everything. <laughs> it took everything. <laughs> Not the cards. I still got them. It took everything in their power to get you out. You just kept evading them until you had a battle. So Maddie, I want to talk to you about what it was like knowing that they were coming after you. You were in the bottom of the totem pole repeatedly, had your two cards, and they tried to fool you into playing them repeatedly, and you never did until the battle happened. So Maddie, I want to give the floor to you to talk about your journey with the cards and the battle. Help me that Derek saw the, me get the cards. So, like, that didn't help me at all. And, like, also Jackie and Tessa saw. But, like, Derek was also the one that was, like, one, the one that I saw going out and, like, telling everyone about him. But, like, I mean, I thought I was doing pretty good because I knew, like, because I had played, like, Survivor with Kadia. And, like, I very vividly remember her trying to, like, get me this card whenever I did have it then. And, like, I kind of fell for it that first time and I, like, I used my thing and I was like going in, I was like, if I get an exposed, I'm going to say I'm going to use it, but I'm not going to use it to have like, to make them think that I was going to flush my cards only because I know how I, how I am and that's how I was going to do it. So I knew seeing Kadia coming in that door, I kind of knew like, oh, well, this is going to happen again if I find one. I was really hoping I didn't find one, but I did. So it kind of just like was one of those things like, well, you have to try to save yourself, like keep out of the bottom and then I was put in the bottom and then stupid chopsticks and then <laughs> by me. <laughs> also, I'd like to say thank you to Jackie for subliminally showing me how to use chopsticks on the side because I had no idea. I didn't even funny. see that. That wouldn't I have been possible. On I know. The side. You know, said, one of the fans commented that I should have just used the opposite side. I never would have thought about that. Oh, like, I feel like it would have been harder. harder. Have you seen the Why thicker that? side? But you're, it would have been know. harder to hold on the thinner side, Yeah, I feel side, like right? it would have been harder, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but if you, I was holding it with both hands like how I was, oh, it would have okay. had a flatter surface. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, it would have held. Physics? Yeah, that's okay. how I was doing it. Yeah, so, it right. would have held more marbles, and I would have put more marbles in there. That's how it worked. Maddie, yeah, I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Maddie and Derek, actually. Yeah. Why didn't you guys ever think to become like, you know, this duo of some sorts and just kind of like run the house, you know, run the game? I think that probably, like, no one would have ever seen Derek working together with Maddie. No one would have ever saw that coming. Mm -hmm. So, like, for First. me, okay, so I don't know if I was like, it wasn't in filming a lot, but like, I remember this very vividly, like, me and Derek sitting on the couch, like him, like cheering me on and everything, like during the whole game. And like, I remember very vividly, like him, like supporting me, but like not really working with me. So like me being the person that I am and the way I am, that to me is like a duo, an alliance. But like, I also knew that he was talking with other people. So like, I, like I trusted him and then I didn't trust him and then I trusted him. And like, it was just one of those things like, this went up and down, and it was one of those things, like, I wish we could have worked together, but I don't know. It was just, 
I mean, I feel like we did work to a little, look, work together a little bit. You know, we worked together well enough for you to tell me about your cards. Um, I even came to you and told you, which didn't get a lot of airtime, but I even came to you on the bed in a room and I told you that they were tricking you to use your cards, but that wasn't the case. Um, oh, yeah, I and, remember that. That's and, when I was yeah, like... And, and to not use your cards because they just wanted you to use them, but they weren't really going to vote you. So I feel like we did work together, but a lot of our game was a little bit of like this going at each other. But I don't know. I feel like, like I said, we worked together in some ways, but when it when it came down to that marble competition, that was an opportunity to, to not just take out one card in the game, but two cards. So yeah, that was I'm the like best totally understand to that because like if I would, if I like for example, if like you would have had the cards and like everyone was getting up against you and like everyone was in agreement, then that would have, like I would have went with them. You know what I mean? So like, it was one of the things like, no matter what, like, even if I didn't have the cards, I might not, I might have still went out cause I was probably one of the weakest people, but I yeah. do. Yeah. And then to be fair, like, I just want to throw this out there too. Like we did not gang up on Madison y'all. Our confessionals may have looked like that and it may have sounded like that, but we were just saying that we all eyed each other. It was just Madison and I going after each other's bowls. Everybody else was literally focusing on their own bowls, trying to get their own marbles on their bowls. That's all it yeah. was. We were not ganging up on Madison. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't feel like that at all. Like it was one of those things like I was like crying before like the whole challenge had kind of started because like I saw chopsticks and I kind of just like freaked out basically and I was just one of those things like oh no I'm gonna get out like everything and everyone saw that and um I think that's kind of what had all of them like thinking about oh let's just go for her and it was one of those things like I can't change that I don't know how to use chopsticks so I kind of knew I was gonna go out I just had to try my best to try to get at least one marble into someone's bowl, and I did get one marble, so that, that's all that I cared about. I was, I, I was able to get one. <laughs> yeah, I think if you wouldn't have said that you didn't know how to use the chopsticks, I think it would have gone a lot better for you. And oh, yeah. I saw in the comments, someone was like, why didn't Jackie and Madison, like, work together? And I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, could have probably been done, <laughs> but that wasn't, like, we didn't talk about that at all, like, I also want to talk about some other interesting things that happened that round. No. Josh. Nope. Josh took a shot at Luke. Luke then made a move to save himself. <laughs> then <laughs> Shane undid that. Oh my God. Honk, honk. <laughs> Back to the bottom. Uh, now, what happened? I'm talking about um, you targeting Luke and then Luke trying to save himself and then <laughs> Shane undoing it. <laughs> so Josh, I, real quick and briefly, I want to hear from you why you chose to target Luke that round. Got it. So for me, whenever I play games, I look at who's left in the game and who might be like immediate targets and also who I'm working with. And at that point, I'm working with almost everyone in the cast to some extent, minus Maddie and Jackie, at least on my end. So for me, Luke was the easier target because in my eyes, I felt like Luke in the end would have had more pull. I felt like he was able to probably talk his way into anything. And honestly, I didn't want that threat going any further than final nine. I didn't get what I wanted. He made final seven, final six. Um, but I just wanted to plant those seeds in the beginning so people can know that like, hey, like he's a threat to don't forget about him because the people who are usually quieter and people, not quieter, the people who are usually undetected, I will say, usually are the ones that make it to the end. And I feel like Luke would have just slithered his way to the end. Not like in a snaky way. But just, uh, <laughs> just want to like, you know, a little, a little booty to the end. A little quirky. Sure. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you still got it on, baby girl. You still got it on. But um, <laughs> I'm just playing Luke. You know, I love you. Um, oh, I love you so much. But yeah, no, I just, that's just why Luke had to go there. No one was targeting him. And I was like, I'm not going to do that house is dirty work. I'll make my own target. And that's what I did with Luke. All right. And then Luke, you make a move to save yourself. It gets announced. Luke, you are the switch. Wait, hold on. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. And then of all people, of all of your options, you choose the one person who has a secret advantage to undo it. 
And to be fair, wait, wait, wait. To be fair, had he switched, because it was only me, Jace, and Sabrina, right, that were safe. You weren't switching Jace. So had you switched Sabrina, I still would have used it. So either way, Luke would have still gone back to the bottom. Interesting. This alliance looked out for each other, y'all, in every aspect. Every yeah, but like, <laughs> see, there's, okay, so I have two comments on that. Number one, the, the first thought that crossed through my head was, if I put Jace at the bottom right now, this entire game is going to flip all the way around. I knew that if I flipped Jace onto the bottom, because I, ca- I caught the vibes that everyone thought that I was working closely with him, that like nobody would trust me moving forward, and I literally would be the person voted out in that round. So it kind of ended up working that I didn't switch him back to the bottom. Um, second off, um, I feel like choosing, if I would have chosen Sabrina to switch to the bottom, and you use that card, that would have put your alliance on blast. I feel like then everyone would have, act, like, I feel like it would have tra- changed the trajectory of the game to where everyone would have been like, oh, it's so clear. Josh put Shane and Sabrina at the top. Shane just got for Sabrina. That's a trio. I mean, but at the same time that you have to remember at that point, you still go back to the bottom and then we still have the battle and then we still have the vote. It was clear at the end of that round where the lines were drawn. It was you, Kadia, Jace, and Derek on one side voting against Jackie. And it was me, Josh, Sabrina, and Jackie voting against you. So the lines already came clear. So it really wouldn't have changed as much. But yes, our alliance probably would have been a little more known and kind of out there where maybe everyone else is kind of like, yeah, maybe we do need to break them up. Mm -hmm. So Either way it goes, our alliance was ready to put ourselves on the line for each other. It showed many, many times when I switched Sabrina, Shane willing to do that. And when, when I was the top of the totem pole at final nine, I put them both in the top. Mm-hmm. Like that should have been a sign enough, but like I was in everyone's ear. I made y'all feel so comfortable with me. That's Nobody my- really talked to me. Let me, oh, I don't, I don't need to jump too far ahead. I don't need to jump too far ahead. Wait, yet. okay. <laughs> I'll jump. I'll take a step backwards, Luke, because you're saying like this would have thrown my alliance or our alliance out there a bit more and made it more known. But mm-hmm. Jason, the previous round, literally said before he placed the top, before he tasted, before he placed his rankings, he literally said, "I'm putting my closest people mm-hmm. at the top." Right. And you were in there, so was, yeah. So I was, didn't say Jace was smart, but I'm not um, gonna say you anything. It. He but, was. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything, but it really did show who Jace was close to, and it really drew the line in the sand for me in my in my mind who I could trust. And at that point, I knew that Jackie and Maddie were at the bottom. And so were Josh and Sabrina with that. Well, Josh was kind of with Jace, but Sabrina and I were down there too. So I knew that I had no shot with them. So I had to ride and die with my people. So fair point. Hong Kong. All right. Needless to say, we're talking about Josh's round. We're not going to let it slide that Josh's round was a complete flop. Wait, because we can talk. I'm wait, 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 wait. How, how was it a flop? Come it wasn't on, a flop. It was wait, not no, a flop. No, Shane, Shane, Shane. Let him explain it. He said okay. it. He's okay. bold. Okay. Miss Bold. Okay. How was it a flop? Josh. I mean, I don't know if Madison was your target, but Madison went home on the totem pole. Okay. And then you wanted to keep Jackie and vote out Luke on the boat, and Jackie went home on the boat. Okay. And that makes it a flop. How? Well, you, you, your target didn't go home. Okay, but, but look be- at the but look at what I did accomplish. Top of the totem pole, me and my but, home girls okay, stayed true. for yes, the round. Yes, no one was up for the vote. Congrats. So my own, Congrats. who I was one hundred percent behind, we was good. But had that been Sabrina, had that been Shane at the bottom, and it was tying, I wasn't breaking. Maddie, I mean, Maddie, Jackie can go. Ah! That's a nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's about Sorry, to look at it. Like Jackie, clean, you get it. It's a game, it. right? Yeah, nice like, way to look at it, clean way to flip it. We respect I, it. And, and all, it was never, it was never a flop with me because Luke all, went yeah. home the next <laughs> round from the seed <laughs> that I planted. <laughs> Shane, you uh, were saying? I no, was, I was gonna say it wasn't a flop. Top of the totem pole because one, that. every single round, like I said, Maddie and Jackie were in the bottom. Josh literally put them back in the bottom and you guys we took them out like you guys took them out that's what you guys also wanted it wasn't a flop it was helpful it, it, for you guys you guys can twist it like baby. that but if we're gonna call it spade spade josh wanted jackie josh wanted luke to go that didn't happen so I wanted let's him just to go, but like also, y'all can flip it show. how y'all want to flip it now but it didn't and we work flip out it like burgers, baby. <laughs> 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 i would just like to say i would just like to say thank you derek thank you 
Yes, Luke. What do you think it? Wait, whoa. What do you think it? Yeah. Think it we, for? Because Derek got what he wanted. That right no, because Derek, because Derek voted with us and kept me safe. Oh. He could have easily made it five three. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all had a moment. Let me thank you, Derek. <laughs> For doing that, <laughs> yes, Josh, but like I said you. before, never a flop top of the totem pole with Miss Josh Snowman. Never that, and thank you, Shane. Um, thank welcome, you, Shane. <laughs> also, one moment that I would like to bring up that I feel like has not been touched on yet was the iconic exchange between Josh and I, in which we giggled, and I looked directly into the camera, very clearly pissed off. <laughs> um. Okay, so I had no idea Luke did that, and when I walked away, I was very genuine in my heart about what I said, as I always am. Baby, I was pissed. And he was upset. I didn't understand why, but then again- Because you just told me you were gonna vote me out to my face. You literally said, (laughs) I'm voting you out and there's nothing that you can do. And I was like, oh. I mean, he also did put you at the bottom of the totem pole. Oh yeah, no, it should have been clear for you. I wasn't very empathetic. I think that's the word I'm looking for to like your feelings. And I think it's just because like I never had to experience that in the game. Had I had to experience it, I think maybe I would have been a little softer with um, how I approached you. But I do think at that moment, I'm like, you know what? I've never felt this. I don't know how it feels to be targeted like in such a bold way. So I think had I known how it felt, I would have been a little softer. But that's why, honestly, that moment right there, when you straight up told me to my face, is what instantly earned my respect and jury vote from me. Oh. Because I was like, oh my God, like literally, yeah, I would just like to say, jumping a little ahead, I tried to tell you, Shane and Sabrina, I tried to tell you. I said, take your shot at Josh, he's going to win. I literally yeah. laid, I I laid out his whole game a, for you. But speaking as a loyal person, sometimes that doesn't matter to people. Sometimes if you ride with people, you go to the end, whether... And Luke, I'll be honest, I did think about it because I... Before, you didn't he talk did. to me about it, but I had that in my head after we hit Final 7. We, I had that idea of Josh is in a really good spot. I don't know if I can beat Josh in the end, but... That being said, I couldn't, after that round, couldn't work with Jace, Kadia, I, and you. Because oh, I knew uh, I could have, potentially. However, I knew you guys were coming after me, too. But I did think about coming to talk to you, Luke, and try and flip you over with us because I wanted to push you against Jace and be like, none of us stand a chance against him. But we never had the time to. Because then you were on top of the total ball, so I couldn't. <laughs> For the record, um, let the record reflect, um, in the final six, had I had actually stayed in Sabrina, did go home, that next round, Jace was my number one target. Thank you. Wow. That's interesting. Um, yeah, let me say something about, oh, wait, no, never mind, I'll wait. No, say it, say it. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to get to it. Okay, okay. That's a good segue. Where we at now? Our next um, portion is the collapse of the baggage alliance. Uh. Oh, oh. <laughs> On Jace's top of the totem pole win, he puts Derek at the bottom of the totem pole and things take a turn because his own alliance completely gets eliminated. Now, if you want to talk about a flop top of the totem pole. I was literally just going to say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I was living. I, like, oh, was Luke, I, and, wish, I don't understand why you didn't give us the same time to talk and strategize like you did the other rounds, but that really screwed me over. Um, hey, we just wait. had to do it outside. It was yeah, you did thing. have the time. It was just outside. Yeah, we I know, I said, outside. but it was cut short. It was shorter than usual. Was it? It was actually uh, one of the longer portions we gave you. Well, yeah, I don't remember it round one. Shorter, but... <laughs> wait, Kadia, so do you think you would have told... Wait, where are we at? Wait, I don't want to get too far. Uh, we're at, like right after <clears throat> so the first thing I want to talk about oh. is um, Derek eliminating Kadia with the power. <laughs> well, no, let's, let's back back to the challenge when after Jace won and we were talking... Like, okay, we were you can, talking, yeah. Um, just because... I didn't really get a chance to talk to Jace because, you know, everyone came and ran, like, basically, well, not ran, but, like, everyone was talking to him, um, <laughs> trying to get their point across, I guess, and I, like, I I don't want to say I felt comfortable because deep down, like, I still was, like, there's still a chance, like, this could go wrong. Obviously, I was right, um, but I was, like, this could be wrong. I still didn't feel safe, and I think I told Shane, I told somebody that because it was at this one point, there was one point where it was a circle of me. Yeah, you brought something up of like, you're going to be this. Everyone came up to me and was like, you're going to be the switch. But I had to keep pushing it of like, I don't know if I will be. But it was Maddie and Jackie. So I kind of had the idea like, I should be the switch potentially because I was working with them. But I didn't want people to just 
yeah. just automatically assume it was going to be, be me because then Jace could have just put me at the bottom. Yeah, and then I knew that Derek had that card, but I never thought that he, like, it would come back to bite me in the, the butt. So if we had more time, <laughs> would you have ever told Jace about Derek's card? Because I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I probably would have. Like, I honestly didn't, if I would have talked to Jace, I think the thing was, I didn't talk to Jace at all. I, um, if I would have talked to Jace and he would have told me about putting Derek at the bottom, I would have told him that wasn't a good decision because at the time uh-huh. Derek was a swing boat. So That's- like, so like I, and then honestly didn't think he had any like, with Derek, I mean, I understand like the gameplay. He was trying to make a good move, but he like it wasn't really thought through. So, so I feel like the move was good, just wasn't the time. Yeah, yes. it wasn't the time. It was that's, too early. That's so, what. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Luke. That's what. That's literally what pissed me off and like led to the downfall because I like totally understand where Derek was coming from. Like, okay, Jace, if I can't take you out, I'm literally going to take out your alliance. But like, I feel like it wasn't well. It was not well thought out. It was not well planned. And, like, that's why I was genuinely upset that, like, the vote was coming on to me. Because I was like, I literally, I, I said it in the episode, too. I literally had no idea that he was going to do that. Because he literally told me straight up, it's Shane and Sabrina. One yeah. Of them yeah. Like, because we I was told like, him. We talked to him about it. We were like, you need to either put Shane or Sabrina up. Just because that, it probably would have been the more logical thing to do. Because at that point, we kind of had an idea that, that there, was a, there was a division. Because there was only seven of us. Yeah. Two. Wait, so I have another it question, is, Padilla. Like, if, if, if you had told Jace about Derek's card and everyone was assuming I was going to be the switch, who would you have told um, Jace to put at the bottom? And who would you have, would you have told him not to put you as number two? Um, I don't think I would have told him to put anyone at the bottom, but I felt like logically it would have been smart to put Sabrina at the bottom if he knew about the card and if he had an idea that you would be the switch. Um, I also I, I also would have told him not to put me as number two because that's clearly obviously what the switch is going to be because that was the only person that was safe that round. And so I wish I would have... You know, you think about all this stuff like you should have done because it's like it makes sense logically, but at the same time, like you're kind of like you're like on go, and so you're trying to think of a whole bunch of different case scenarios at the same time. And like, and that one crossed my mind, but I was like, that's so far fetched. Like, it's so far fetched, it will not happen, and it happened. And I was just like, I was, I was literally blown. Like, okay. I was mad. I was mad, 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 mad. I was mad. You was what? mad. I don't know. I... You but... was mad, Luke. If... Yes, because we, because that literally just screwed both of us up back to back. Oh, he did. I was mad though, because like I just like that, like that crap. I like that crap. Like, yeah, man, really. like that, that crap hurt. I think hurt. I think we should time out and say bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Maddie. Bye, Maddie. Bye, Maddie. Bye, Maddie. Bye, Maddie. Good luck, Bye, Maddie. But no, like that—that that had me blown. Like I was so. I, Love you. I, I, I like. It was like the most furthest thing that like you could possibly come up with. Literally. And. I watched my first K drama like the Sierra I just feel like with the numbers being how they were, there this was a seven people person game at this point, and uh, it was three here, three there, and then just me. I just, <sighs> logically and like I said Jason and I had a good report up until that moment we were good we were talking we were like talking game and everything that morning woke up yeah. um, it would just make sense for Jace to win the top of the totem pole obviously we had a good relationship with good Bill so obviously you're in power I have no reason to go against you in this moment because I don't want to go home so why, why would I do something to get myself put in the bottom so but he still put me in the bottom so at that point it just didn't matter anymore I have a question for you, Derek, actually. So say that Jace had not put you at number two, and I assume that Shane would probably have switched, like, something in the bottom instead of switching to number two to, like, keep you safe. Wait, if Derek was number two? Yeah. And I was the bottom? Yeah, would you have switched with him, or would you switch, like, me or Kadia or something to the bottom? Honestly, I don't know. Even if Shane... Oh, go ahead, Shane. No, you can go ahead. I have to kind of think about it. Because I was just going to say... E- oh. oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, even if Shane did uh, switch me to the bottom, I was still... I still personally wasn't going to end up on the... Um, 
the bottom there, right? Right. But my question for you was going to be like, if Kadia was at the bottom, say, and then she chose you as her defender at that point, since Jace didn't directly put you on the bottom, would you have saved Kadia? Oh, yeah. 100% I would have saved Kadia because there was no, um, there was really no like reason for me to be upset with Jace in that moment because right. he had to put people on the bottom. So, I yeah. Because I. I just never understood the, like, this is hurting Jace, because Jace is still in the game. Like, baby, he still had a chance to win, so it didn't really hurt him. It more so no, hurt me. No, it hurt. And it, I no, was, it hurt Jace. I mean, it, yeah, it hurt Jace, but, like, Jace. at the same time, it, it I mean, I don't know, because, like, I, I don't know, because, like, I, I, I felt like, besides Josh, the only one that was really, like, like rooting for you, Derek, was me and Josh. And I like I had I was behind you since day one. Like when everyone was glad that you went home, I was really upset that you went home when I put you at the bottom. And then when you had came back, everyone like I like was one of the first ones that cheered and like was up and like was happy that you were back. And so like I understand like it's a game and stuff like that. But all the same time I had I had your back during the whole game mostly. And so yeah, I, I appreciate all that. I think so it's all that, but if we're if we're talking about that and we're gonna speak about the game, Kadia, we're gonna be honest. I mean, no, that's, you that's what Jason's, I'm saying. End the game. Yeah, you I, had Jason's back 100 percent over mine. No, you but would've. that's the thing, baby. That's the thing. I probably would have took you to final three over Jason. I was just gonna say I wanted to be I final three with you and Kadia. To final three over Jason, I said that to Luke before. I said that to Luke that morning before. That's easy to Tyler. say though. You didn't say that to me. You didn't say it to Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah I never heard came, that. When she a lot of was there, she, she was definitely team Derek. She really. Yeah. You said what? I, I never heard that. Oh, sorry, Nicole. Go ahead. No, I was. Saying? I was saying that when you came down after you got out, you were still team Derek, even after he sent you home. Yeah, I mean, and I'm still team Derek. I'm like, I'm not mad about the outcome at all. I I was more yeah. so like in shock because it happened so fast for me. Yeah. Like yeah. it happened like in a split of a wink. I feel and like. And I just want to say, Kadia, me switching you, like I said, was nothing personal. Yeah. I love you so much. It was I took like, nothing. I took nothing personal in this game. I know. Like, I want to say so, that. Yeah. It was a. It was a. It was all game for me. It was. Yeah. And I think it hurt more so just because I was ready to come back and like. Yeah. And I was so close you that were morning. Doing I woke, so well. I woke up you that morning so, much so optimistic. I was like, oh, I'm going to win this. I'm so close. Like, at least I'm going to get final three. And that, it happened. I'm about to cry. And that happened so fast. I was so, like, I was just upset more. So I felt like, because I could have did something more in this situation just because that's where, like, if you don't talk, that's where it gets you in trouble. You know, like, if you don't cover all your bases or all the points that you, like, think of. But this, sometimes you're like, uh, I don't like you kind of second guess yourself sometimes and that's where you gotta not I gotta learn not to second guess myself in a game yeah. but um and then even like even when I chose Derek as a defender I think I turned to someone and I was like I don't think he's gonna go down there and pick save I don't know who I turned to and said that to but I feel I like it was me yeah I, I think I said it I know I said it to someone and I was like I don't think he's gonna pick save so and when he came up and showed power I wasn't I was more in so shocked that I wasn't ready to go home more than shocked that he saved pa that he picked power and people were telling me like they were saying well why would you pick Derek after he did this to all these other people and I was like honestly I was like honestly it was a 50-50 chance because he didn't save Nicole but he saved um Jackie Jackie and he didn't and then I was like you only had three right Derek you only had three oh at your point, point yeah three. who is the who I was the fourth one I well, you were the third. No, you were the third. Shane was the fourth. Okay. And um, and I was like, well, I, I felt like that he would save me just because of the – I wasn't really an alliance, but we were kind of like whatever, work, working I, together, I guess. I'm not really sure how to explain. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. It was just a more sure shock factor than a I can't believe he did that factor. Because then at the end of the day, it's still your game, you know what I mean? And you got to do what you got to do to win. And, right. And, like, I'm sure if it was somebody else, he would have probably picked to send them home over me, I probably I would like to think. But at the end of the day, he did what he had to do to make sure that he got closer to where he wanted to do. And at the end of the day, he did. He got Final Four. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I like on, on his behalf, I don't know, like, logically thinking where he was coming from with it, but on his behalf, it had worked for him. And yeah. so I'm not going to knock him for doing that. 
because I'm gonna do something that works for me at the end of the day too, as well. Um, yeah. Well, I just think in my, I don't want to spend too much time because we're almost we're oh, yeah, quick. Yeah, but yeah. in my mind, I just say it. Jace put me at the bottom, and I wanted to do everything I could do to weaken Jace in that moment. I knew that Jace was supposed to go and lose. We all knew that there wasn't a surprise, it wasn't a shock, and it wasn't a secret to anyone. Yeah. And um, so when Jace did that to me, I felt like, what can I do? How can I do this? You chose me to take, and I took power down there, and then it was next thing, you know. Jace picking me to vote first, which I feel like was another it move, yeah, but um, that also, you know, it's an, it's another way to start the ball and weakening Jace. <laughs> Luke. Luke was close to Jace. Now, granted, Luke said he wouldn't have been after that round, but why are we going to wait to find out kind exactly. of thing? No, so, exactly. um, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, shoot, I have something that I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I understand that. And I do think on Jace's part, it wasn't the best move for the top of the totem pole. Um, especially, like, how um, passionate you are, you are during the game. Uh, I felt like at that point, I felt like Jace was more so thinking about himself. And, I mean, that's fine. But, and also, at the same time, you know, he kept saying, where's the strategy? I don't know if Jace really had a strategy the whole game. That. I, and I and he kept saying, "Where's the shuddy baby boy? You didn't have one. I cooked. I hated hearing him say that the whole every time I see him in a confessional talking about where's the strategy." And then like people were saying, "Well, it's Jason's fault. It's Derek's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's no. It's not yeah. like yeah. No people are making fault. the moves that they think are best for their yeah. game. I mean, in that moment, one hundred percent is Jason's fault. But obviously, we're looking back on it. We're all we're just playing a game. So I mean, yeah. yeah, everyone plays a hand in it. I, I mean, you can say it's my fault for not talking. I'll just still blame Jason. <laughs> just still plug it in that it was Jason's fault. <laughs> I mean, you can say it's my fault at the end of the day for not for picking you or for not talking to Jason. Uh-huh. Right? You but, can say like you know. But at the same time, Kadia, like not everyone has every piece of information. Yeah. So yeah. It, it you can't blame yourself or you can't say it's your fault because mm-hmm. you like you didn't have all the information you didn't know jay you didn't know derek was going at the bottom from yeah. jay so like Literally. that did affect your game but that wasn't because of you yeah so you can't blame yourself mm-hmm. for that true yeah can't blame jace okay anyway moving on and i was <laughs> roughly back <laughs> yes and we and we set up we set up that dude that the um that switch so well we thought we was doing something literally we were like it's jace it's jace <laughs> Done. Yeah, period. Cards in his hands. He's gonna make it to final three, and then um, he's the next one on the door after Luke. And I was like, well, <laughs> I hope Derek wins. And then literally yeah, same. Like, All right. Like, since we're talking about the final five, I want to talk about Derek becoming the defender for the fourth time in the season when Shane picks him. Derek, when you go down there to to save or power. As you're standing before your choices, you kept going back and forth on what to select. What was going through your mind there whenever you made your decision? Obviously, I wanted to power. We all watched me play the game, you know, the season and not. Every chance I got, I was taking power. So when I went down there trying to prove something, coming back and saving Jackie. But getting down there, I was loyal, you know. And I, I played a very chaotic game. But when you see me give my – word to people like Josh, I stuck to that 100%. And when I gave Shane my word, I stuck to that. And I was good with, a lot of this didn't get shown, but I feel like the relationship that I had with Shane, Josh, and Sabrina, it was more than what was actually, you know, shown out there, or put out there. And it actually started a lot earlier than what was shown, but um, it was things that built up to that. Hindsight, looking back on it after I did it, I would have probably sat final three had I not did that. But again, you know, I don't know what could have happened. I still don't know to this day what that other power was. So if that power wasn't to sit me into the final three, then I still don't even know if I would have been sitting final three. But it's still a move that I say I would change. That's literally the only move from the season that I say I would change. Um, Derek, you'd be I final three. Sent Shane home. And yeah, I would have sent Shane home. So. And Derek there would have been no way me and Sabrina, because at that point Shane would have been gone. Mm-hmm. So it would have been me, mm-hmm. Sabrina, you, and Jace. We weren't taking Jace yeah. to the final two. And Derek, mm-hmm. I'll say that's the one move I, I'm very happy you didn't you didn't do anything different. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it worked out for me, so thank you. But yeah, um, yeah, that's how I feel about that one. And uh, like I told Shane, I said I would do it again, but I just not I just wouldn't do it. At not final at final five. five. Yeah. Yes. No, I I appreciate you so much for saving me, and mm-hmm. I. 
and a lot of people question why I picked you over Josh. Everyone knew I wasn't picking Jace. Um, but the reason I didn't pick Josh is because I didn't want to put Josh at risk. Josh and Sabrina, I wanted to be at the end with them. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I knew that putting Josh in that position, had he taken save and gone home, it would have been me, Sabrina, you, and Jace at final three. I don't, or at final four. I don't know. And I think we all would have voted Jace out. I just don't think I could have beaten you in the end. I think you had that game wrapped around your, you had the game wrapped around your finger if you were sitting next to Sabrina I as well. So that being said, I felt like picking you and then making that deal with you was better for my game than putting Josh at risk potentially. For the record, that's exactly why I did not pick Kadia as my defender. Thank you. (laughs) Also, I want to say congratulations to the final three for making it there. You all three played amazing games. Uh, you made for a good well. show, and you each, I believe, deserve to make it there to the final three. Thank you. And we, also, know. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We know. Yeah, I'm so tired of Josh. I'm so yeah, tired. They of all so done with me. No, I really am humbled. <laughs> I am. I promise. I promise. Yeah, he is. We love him so much. Well, well, I want to congratulate you, Josh, on your win. Yeah. The totem pole. It was not an easy thing to do, and I have been playing this game hosting this game for years i've seen literally hundreds of people play this is a very difficult game to make it to the end and it's even harder to win it's even harder to make it to the end with no votes you know cast against you like that's you know nearly impossible only a few people have done that but not all of them have won first black winner first black man and the final three, like there's just so many. I could keep going with the stats. Keep them going. Of my game. <laughs> oh, I have the highest percentage of votes um, ever for our winner for seasons one, two, and three. I could really keep going. I'm not going to do that. I'm probably going to get that. <laughs> but um, no. Yeah, I, I will say with Josh in the stats because he can tell you everybody's stats right now if you ask him. Don't play with the stats. He has a spreadsheet pulled up. I studied this game, you guys. No, this is I watched this. I watched season two at least ten times before coming here. Like I knew like wow. how this game was gonna work, so I knew exactly how it was gonna play. The only thing that really threw me off was the defender thing. And I was like, yes. right. I did not like that. Right. Yeah. Josh, but let me know my stats. On um, on what? <laughs> that was that was no 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 all do care and love each other. And this is uh, my new family and will forever be my family. You guys are amazing. This was a once in a lifetime experience and I love and appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Literally, thank you so much. We tweet everything we just said. That's RT. I'm gonna add to that. I I don't know, like the past, I wouldn't say the past two cast members, um, I guess all being from the same college, you were already kind of clicky. I'm not gonna say, are they already, some of them already knew each other. And so coming in with you guys, I was really nervous. And I did not think that um, I would leave with the relationship that I did. And honestly, the game was fun. But honestly, after the game, I felt like we bonded a lot, especially <laughs> after the game. Those and ranked games. Oh, my God. Okay. Played more games. Yeah, we played yes. more games. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Whenever we finished filming and did our fake totem pole. <laughs> Madison's oh. tissue. <laughs> I was just looking at the video. Yes, from yes. That. Yeah, throw the video in here. Throw the video in here. Oh my god. Like Derek oh, oh, oh. and then the cookie, the shoe, and then the tissue. <laughs> <laughs> There's the eyeglass cleaner and then like a couple of ice. Like that was so great. And honestly, I like if I I wish we could all be in the house together again at some point. Hopefully it will happen in the future after, you know, not in the pandemic. Um but I do love everyone, and I'm just so glad that I met you guys. Honestly, my life is so much more fun and exciting, and I look forward to hearing from you guys whenever I can, even though I know that all of us get busy. But when I do hear from you guys, it's honestly a blessing. So, Building. 
I, I want to say um, show love to those who show love to you back. Um, Cause you know, sometimes, you know, when you don't have that opportunity to show it anymore, it could be too late. So just keep that in mind in everything you do in life. So that's all I have. I just want to say before Wesley cuts the cameras, if I dragged you this season, it probably was for a good reason. <laughs> but no hard feelings. And truly, y'all, so it was much. just a game. Everybody it was just did. a game. And uh, we're going to keep it as just a game. Connor, to you, man. The heated moment we had earlier. Nothing but respect still Dude, for you, Connor. I love the fact that you – I love the fact that you stood up for yourself and um, nothing but respect there. But, y'all, I'm going to head out because my phone is being blown up. I'm going to keep having a decline call. So, I'm going to go. It's been a great night. Have Thank a good you, night, Derek. Derek. And we love Thank you, Derek. That's my boyfriend, y'all. Yeah, sorry <laughs> what you said. Happy National Boyfriend Day. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So, listen, I didn't even get told that today, Kadia, so I appreciate that coming from you. Thank you so much. I don't even think you know. No, 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 before before we cut the cameras, um, I just want to say thank you to Wesley for giving me this opportunity. Um, this this really, um, I've always presented myself as a confident individual. Like I know who I am, what I represent, and what I want to do with myself. And I feel like this gave me even more of a chance to grow and like truly get to know myself and what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are, mm -hmm. and how I can better myself in my real life outside of the game. Um, and to my fellow cast members, I obviously love each and every single one of you, period. But um, oh. I just want to say thank you, Wesley. Oh. Thank I you. And I'm, I'm going to say, like, life can be really hard sometimes. And I really just want to bring people together and give people a show that they can enjoy their time and just have a little bit of a break from reality. And I'm so glad that I casted each of you. You all have such a special place in my heart. And this show has changed my life. And all of you have changed my life. And I just want to show y'all the love and make sure you know how thankful I am that you've applied and to the fans too for watching and supporting the show. I, I'm a little bit emotional right now. I don't know what's- I'm about to cry. <laughs> Hold on. Stop. It's a true reaction. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just, I, I really, it really does. Um, it, it's a lot of hard work and I spend countless hours working on the show when I have for years and to see the growth and the love that's come out of it, it just truly does mean the world to me and it has changed my life. So I, it's all love and I'm so thankful. And we're all here because Wesley, of you. So awesome. thank you, Wesley. Yes, love Wesley. So I'm so blessed to be able to see you like prosper and grow since I've met you. Um, Cause I remember when you were just talking about this as an idea and starting it as a game you play during fall break when no one would go home and look at it now. This is crazy. Like, it's insane. I, it's like you went from crawling to running, baby. And I'm <laughs> uh, me running up the hill trying to catch the Macy sale. Yes, I'm so like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just crazy to think, like, what, five years ago? It's been five years mm -hmm. that you have created this. And no, no, not, you know? it's been, I think it's been two, three. Oh, well, not close enough, close enough. I'm talking about oh, how long you've been in college. She wore, she wore a boot. She wore a boot. But I met Wesley six years ago, so it's all a blur, honestly. Because, <laughs> um, but I, I, I just, I'm so proud of you. And also, you. I got to show my nails every time I'm on camera. <laughs> because last, you know, the first season, my nails were very busted. So, <laughs> um, all right, with so that, I want everybody to say goodbye to the fans and to the viewers thank you so much for watching Bye. thank you guys so much for watching thank you for watching thank you guys so much apply shout out to lucky season, apply for season four apply. Yes, apply apply, apply, apply. get your apply name out there oh, i want to see you all definitely apply vote. if you're black yes, apply. Yes, yes, you're right. Right. Yes. oh my god yes Register to vote. make this sure you vote october 5th Yes, you can Her. tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day to register. It, this isn't yes. going to be public. It's oh, not, shoot. You should have well, registered, registered yesterday. Not about politics, okay? Okay. Y'all go vote. You better worry. Also, register. if you need any casting tips, you know, DM any one of us. Yeah. Everyone would love to help. I was going to share that, but I'll, I'll put it in the comments. <laughs> well, Instagram is beautiful by underscore nature. At Luke Gary underscore. Yes. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we will see you for Josh's upcoming show. Woo!
Yay! Yay!